They say blood is thicker than water, but the ink of my mother's secret was enough to dilute the strongest of bonds. Venture further into my story as Emily, where the discovery of a hidden affair spirals into the unveiling of lives intertwined with mine by blood I never knew I shared. Here, in the heart of a quiet village, the whispers of my mother's past beckon me to uncover the existence of siblings who walk unknowingly in the shadow of a shared legacy. Stand by my side as I navigate the complexities of new ties that bind with an intensity that rivals the most ardent of romances. Chapter 3 My Secret Siblings Mother's steamy affair leads to shocking family revelations. You know, they say ignorance is bliss. Well, I can tell you now that's a load of rubbish. Ignorance is a ticking time bomb, and I was living on borrowed time until that blasted letter blew my life to smithereens. Mark, I said, my voice quivering like a schoolgirl's. Did Mum ever mention anyone from before? Someone special, maybe? I watched his face, looking for that tell-tale flicker, that sign I wasn't just grasping at straws. He paused, a spoonful of cereal suspended mid-air, milk dripping back into the bowl. Emily, your mum was a saint, he said with a forced chuckle. But there it was, that flicker. Why do you ask? I slid the letter across the table to him, the paper now creased from my nervous folding and unfolding. His eyes scanned the words, and I watched him, really watched him. There was a moment, so brief I might have imagined it, where his facade cracked, like he knew. He knew something. Ridiculous, he scoffed, pushing the letter back. But his hands, they betrayed him, trembling ever so slightly as he reached for his tea. The rest of the breakfast passed in a blur of half-hearted conversation and unmet glances. I needed air. I needed space. I needed to think away from the suffocating closeness of Mark's too quick assurances. I found myself wandering the village, the place where my mother had walked, laughed and loved. The same cobbled streets, the same thatched roofs, and the same old willow by the river, its branches sweeping the ground as if bowing to the weight of its own history. The villagers, they knew me, the good little girl grown into the editor who'd moved back to her roots. But now, as I passed by, I wondered what secrets they held behind their polite nods and weathered smiles. Did they see her in me? Did they whisper about me as they did about her? Mrs Aldridge, the baker, handed me a loaf of bread, her eyes lingering on mine a moment too long. Your mother was a lovely woman, she said her voice laced with something I couldn't place. Sympathy? Pity? Knowledge? I wandered, lost in thought, until I stood before the town records office, an old stone building that seemed to sag under the weight of the stories it held. I pushed the door open, the bell tinkling above me like a herald of the secrets. I was about to unearth. The records were meticulous, a paper trail of births, deaths, and marriages. And there it was, my birth certificate. Father, John Carter. Mother, Anne Carter, nay Harrow. But in the margin, a note, scribbled in a hand I recognised from the love letters, my mother's. Ask about the Hendersons, it read. My heart skipped. The Hendersons, a name I knew, a family of artists that had lived in the village for generations. Could it be? My search led me to an old, ivy-covered house on the outskirts of the village, the Henderson home. I knocked, my heart in my throat, as the door creaked open. An old man stood before me, his hair wild and white as the clouds above. His eyes sharp and clear met mine, and something passed between us. Recognition. Emily Carter. I introduced myself, my voice steady despite the storm inside me. I believe we may have... family in common. His expression didn't change, 
but he stepped aside. A silent invitation. The house smelled of oil paint and turpentine, a scent that filled the gaps in my memory with vivid colour. He led me to a sitting room, where portraits lined the walls, the faces in them as familiar as my own. Your mother, he began, his voice rough like sandpaper, was a force of nature, she and my brother Thomas. Well, they were kindred spirits. He paused, his eyes clouding with old grief. They had plans to leave, to start anew, but then she found out she was pregnant. I felt the room spin, my mother's words in her diary echoing in my ears. I have to end this, she had written, for the sake of my family, for my children. Thomas Henderson was my father, wasn't he? The question hung in the air, a plea for a denial that never came. The old man nodded slowly, the confirmation settling over me like a shroud. And you're not the only one, he added, his gaze steady on mine. Not the only one. The implications of his words were like a punch to the gut. Half-siblings. This quest for the truth wasn't just about me anymore. It was about us. As I left the Henderson house, the old man's parting words ringing in my ears, I knew what I had to do. I had to find them, my unknown siblings, pieces of a puzzle I never knew were missing. But as I walked back through the village, with each step, a cold realisation crept in. The artist, the village hunk my mother had loved. He had a son, one who had left the village only to return years later. A son named Mark, my Mark. The truth was a twisted vine, and it had been wrapping itself around me all my life. And now I had to untangle it, no matter how painful the process. As I reached the door to my home, my sanctuary, I hesitated. Inside Mark was waiting, the man I loved, the man I married, the man who might be my brother. The next words I spoke, the next actions I took, they would change everything. I took a deep breath and opened the door.